we're contradicting ourselves all the time. We say, okay, we need more protein because we need to make sure we maintain muscle mass because muscle mass is great for longevity. But then on the other side of the equation, we say, well, you don't wanna to eat too much protein because too much protein spikes what's called mTOR and mTOR might not be good for aging. Uh-oh, we're reaching an impasse here. But if we understand the science, we can actually find a solution. So with this video, I'll be able to explain why mTOR could be a problem with aging in terms of just having all kinds of dysfunction and just bad aging, but it can also explain how we can use it to our advantage. So first off, we have to understand the role of mTOR is as a nutrient sensor. It senses that there is enough in the way of amino acids. It recognizes, it says, oh, there's enough protein on hand. So the sensor flips on, the mTOR switch flips on and says, hey, there's fuel, go ahead and build muscle, go ahead and divide cells, go ahead and synthesize lipids, form DNA, translate mRNA, all kinds of things, okay? So it plays a huge role with that, and it is what is called evolutionary conserved, which means in the research world, if you look at different animal models, human models, and you look at various evolutionary stages of these models, mTOR is always conserved, or almost always conserved in some form or fashion, meaning mTOR is critical for life, but it catches a bad rap because mTOR is quote unquote pro-growth. And pro-growth, although is great for building muscle and building tissue, think about it. As we get older and we start getting nervous about cancers and things like that, pro-growth isn't what we always want. So that brings us into this first category I wanna talk about. It's called proteostasis, which is sort of the balance between protein breakdown and recycling and degradation and protein synthesis, okay? We always wanna have our bodies in balance, breaking down the right amount of protein and then synthesizing the right amount of protein so we're at a nice net even. As we get older, the flexibility and this whole situation becomes skewed. Okay, we start having either too much, it's just dysregulated in general. But where does mTOR come in here? Well, we find that when you inhibit mTOR, it seems to improve proteostasis and ultimately leads to slower aging. So essentially you're having less in the way of this overwhelming protein synthesis and more degradation where the cells are recycling, the proteins are recycling properly. And this makes sense as we get older because as we get older, we have dysfunctional proteins that are forming, right? They're, we have more dysfunctional material in the body. So we would want to encourage less growth of this dysfunction and more recycling of this dysfunction. But we run into a very, very, very big problem. It's something I talk about on my channel a lot. As you get older, your protein demand increases it just, and you need more protein simply to maintain muscle and to not become frail. So we're at a catch 22. Okay, you say I need more protein because I need to stabilize my muscle, but at the same time you're telling me protein is going to grow these dysfunctional tissues and dysfunctional cells, dysfunctional mitochondria. How do I handle this? Well, first thing, we can't always go back in time, but a prophylactic approach is probably the best approach. Doing more in your 30s, your 40s, and 50s as far as doing your fasting and doing your you know big mTOR sort of inhibition effects, exercise, fasting, ketogenic dieting, things like that. Doing those earlier in life can actually have a benefit later on in life. That way you're not finding yourself at 70 years old trying to do 72 hour fasts, wasting muscle in an effort to preserve your cells, right? There's a study that was published in the journal PNAS that took a look at mTOR inhibition and it found that mTOR inhibition ended up stimulating autophagy, stimulating protein degradation via autophagy as well as another pathway too. So what that's telling us is that as we get older, when we do inhibit mTOR, we do encourage this cellular recycling. And it's kind of funny because if you look at a study that was published in the journal Life Sciences, you find that the lifespan of men on average is about 7.9 to 8% less than that of women. Well, men are also about 8% taller than women. So it's been speculated in the research world that, well, maybe men don't live as long because they have more size, more height, and more mTOR spikes, since mTOR is strongly correlated with aging. Kind of interesting. So the very simple bottom line with this is that we need to be doing the work 
in our 30s, in our 40s, in our 50s, as much as we possibly can. Get the fasting in then, when we're not breaking down as much protein. Get the ketogenic diet cycling in then, so you can get the muscle sparing effects there. And do the things that you can do to sort of inhibit mTOR then, so you're not having to grasp for straws and scramble when you're in your 70s. Now, as we move on with this video, we're gonna talk about these acute spikes that you can have strong, legitimate spikes of mTOR at the right time to build muscle compared to chronically spiking mTOR by like eating all the time. So I'll have a specific pathway that we can kind of talk about with that. I did put a link down below for Verso, which is a very interesting company. They have two really cool new products. One is called Cell Being. It is very interesting because it contains NMN as well as trans resveratrol, as well as what is called trimethylglycine. Now, NMN is going to potentially increase NAD, so it's increasing available energy, so to speak, at a cellular level, okay? Then it has transresveratrol, which may actually help activate sirtuins, which play a role in overall longevity. And then it has what's called trimethylglycine, which Dr. David Sinclair has been talking about a lot. Very interesting stuff that actually supports and potentially adds more methyl groups so that your body can deal with extra energy. So when you give your body extra energy via NMN, NAD, well, you have to actually metabolize more waste. So you need more methyl groups along with that. But anyway, they also have another really cool product that's called Clean Being. Now Clean Being has luteolin in it, as well as spermidine, as well as what is called dihydroquercetin. And this is designed to do exactly the kind of stuff we're talking about. Help with autophagy, help with mitochondrial autophagy, also known as mitophagy, and helping the sort of cellular cleanup, encouraging the cellular cleanup. So two really cool products, one for energy metabolism and for overall just that benefit there, and another one to help with cellular cleanup. So I put a link down below that'll save you 15% off if you wanna try them out. They are a huge sponsor on this channel, they've supported a lot of content, and that link will save you 15% off to try out their two brand new products as well as their original NMN formula. So now we move into mitochondrial dysfunction, which is a huge topic. Okay, mitochondria is our energy powerhouse. It's where we create energy. Well, as we get older, these mitochondria become a little more funky, dysfunctional actually. And when they're dysfunctional, here's what happens. When they try to process energy, they have these leaks and they just do not process energy as well and you end up with a high amount of reactive oxygen species or oxidative stress. As we get older, the vast majority of our oxidative stress is coming from the mitochondria. Okay, so those mitochondria are not exactly what we want to be replicating and growing. Okay, we don't want a bunch of dysfunctional mitochondria. Well, there's a study that was published in the journal Nature that demonstrated that inhibiting mTOR, blocking mTOR, whether pharmaceutical intervention or however you wanna do it, would actually decrease, it would stop mitochondrial biogenesis, and it would actually block what's called PGC1A, which is the potent activator, the master regulator, of mitochondrial biogenesis. Now, if you are a veteran of this channel, you know that I am always talking about ways to increase mitochondrial biogenesis. Well, this is one situation where it's different. Why would you want to increase the proliferation or the density or increase the division, or if you wanna call it that, or in this case, the fathering of more mitochondria if it's dysfunctional? Okay, bad mitochondria are gonna produce more bad mitochondria. So we don't wanna consistently do that. You see, it's interesting because there's something called mitophagy. Mitophagy is autophagy that's occurring directly at the mitochondrial level. And as we get older, mitochondrial autophagy or mitophagy is more important than biogenesis. Because we are at a stage when we're older where we want the mitochondria to have quality control and be able to consolidate efforts and get better and more efficient rather than just replicating something. For example, wanting more mitochondria just for the sake of wanting more mitochondria is sort of like saying, I wanna build muscle. So your body just builds a bunch of muscle and it just keeps building it and keeps building it until you can't move, right? At a certain point, you need to have quality control. Well, there's a study that was published in Molecular and Cellular Biology that found that too much mTOR also blocks mitophagy, okay? So if we have consistent protein consumption happening throughout the course of the day when we are older, 
what ends up happening is you're actually blocking mitophagy from occurring. You're blocking the quality control system within the mitochondria and you're stimulating, in a lot of ways, mitochondrial biogenesis. So you're stimulating more mitochondria to form, which could be good if your mitochondria is healthy, but the chance of your mitochondria being healthy over age 50 is not that great, unfortunately. But what we do want is the occasional spike in mTOR because we still want mitochondrial growth, but we don't want it happening all the time. So we want acute spikes, not chronic spikes. So what that means is as we get older, having very clear defined periods of time in which we spike protein intake pretty high is almost more important. Doing a two meal a day type approach a few days per week for people over the age of 50 is very important because instead of having chronic mTOR spikes, where we're eating protein all day and chronically spiking mTOR, we're having these quick little spikes where the body can do what it needs to do with mTOR and the rest of the time focus on mitophagy, okay? But then we get into another category called cell senescence. Now, this is very interesting, and I hope you're still watching this video, because senescence is where our cells lose the ability to divide. Okay, for example, if you have a messed up cell and it's cruddy, and it goes through cell division, you're gonna have multiple messed up cruddy cells. Not a good thing. Just like the mitochondrial dysfunction, we want cruddy cells to not be able to divide. It's almost like you want to, well, I'm gonna just come out and say it. You wanna give those cells a vasectomy. You should not be able to procreate. So think about it in a different analogy. Think about you've got this great person. Okay, this, it's a guy and he's really good at what he does and he's a hard worker and he gets a lot of work done, but he is like a toxic person. You just don't, like, it's one of those people who would be like, the world needs this person, but they do not need more than one of this person. So you say, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna give you a vasectomy because we don't want you to procreate. We just can't have this happening, okay? Your body kind of regulates that with the cells. It sees that and it says, you're good at what you do, but you're a little, <laughs> you're a little weird. So we don't make sure you don't procreate. So it makes that cell a senescent cell, which means it can still do its job, but it cannot procreate, okay? So this cell that cannot procreate, there is a problem, okay? This cell that cannot procreate it's like he's so frustrated that he can't procreate. He's like, my biological need to procreate, that he actually starts leaking inflammation. They're called SASPs, okay? So this inflammation can actually add up. So even though senescent cells are a good thing, they trigger inflammation. Well, insert mTOR once again. There was a study published in the journal Science that found that mTOR was actually a big part of the SASP inflammation. And if we can inhibit mTOR, those senescent cells will not end up leaking as much inflammation. It is very, very wild and very, very cool. So basically, if we could do periodic fasting and ways to decrease mTOR, now we can get there via different methods too. Okay, we can sauna, we can do longer duration zone two cardio, like 30, 60, 90 minutes of zone two cardio, and that can inhibit mTOR quite a bit too and actually allow for this cell senescence to really thrive without the SASP issues. So basically what you're doing is you're taking this cell that's frustrated because he had a vasectomy and he can't procreate, and you're saying, you know what? You're, you're, giving, him, you're giving him something to calm him down. He's no longer angry and he's no longer leaking inflammation. He's focused on what he's doing. It's a weird analogy, but it's the best one that I could come up with. So the bottom line with this is that if you're over the age of 40, 50, doing a two meal a day approach or even an OMAD approach now and then so that you can still get adequate amounts of protein but in very defined clear windows, that becomes exceptionally important. So as always, I'll see you tomorrow.